In human anatomy, the wrist is variously defined as one, the carpus or carpal bones, the complex of eight bones forming the proximal skeletal segment of the hand, the wrist joint or radiocarpal joint, the joint between the radius and the carpus, and the anatomical region surrounding the carpus including the distal parts of the bones of the forearm, and the proximal parts of the metacarpus or five metacarpal bones and the series of joints between these bones, thus referred to as wrist joints. This region also includes the carpal tunnel, the anatomical snuff box, the flexor retinaculum, and the extensor retinaculum. As a consequence of these various definitions, fractures to the carpal bones are referred to as carpal fractures, while fractures such as distal radius fracture are often considered fractures to the wrist. Structure. The distal radial ulna joint is a pivot joint located between the bones of the forearm, the radius and ulna, formed by the head of ulna and the ulna notch of radius. This joint is separated from the radiocarpal joint by an articular disc lying between the radius and the styloid process of ulna. The capsule of the joint is LAX and extends from the inferior sassiform recess to the ulna shaft. Together with the proximal radial ulna joint, the distal radial ulna joint permits pronation and supination. The radiocarpal joint or wrist joint is an ellipsoid joint formed by the radius and the articular disc proximally and the proximal row of carpal bones distally. The carpal bones on the ulna side only make intermittent contact with the proximal side, the trichotrum only makes contact during ulna abduction. The capsule, LAX and unbranched, is thin on the dorsal side and can contain synovial folds. The capsule is continuous with the mid-carpal joint and strengthened by numerous ligaments, including the palmar and dorsal radiocarpal ligaments, and the ulna and radial collateral ligaments. The parts forming the radiocarpal joint of the lower end of the radius and undersurface of the articular disc above, and the scaphoid, lunate and trichotal bones below. The articular surface of the radius and the undersurface of the articular disc form together a transversely elliptical concave surface, the receiving cavity. The superior articular surfaces of the scaphoid, lunate, and trichotrum form a smooth convex surface, the condyla, which is received into the concavity. Carpal bones of the hand, proximal, A equals scaphoid, B equals lunate, C equals trichotrum, D equals pisiform, distal, E equals trapezium, F equals trapezoid, G equals capitate, H equals hamate. In the hand proper a total of 13 bones form part of the wrist. Eight carpal bones, scaphoid, lunate, trichotrol, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate, and five metacarpal bones, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal bones. The midcarpal joint is the S-shaped joint space separating the proximal and distal rows of carpal bones. The intercarpal joints, between the bones of each row, are strengthened by the radiate carpal and pisoharma T ligaments and the palmar, interosseous, and dorsal intercarpal ligaments. Some degree of mobility is possible between the bones of the proximal row while the bones of the distal row are connected to each other and to the metacarpal bones at the carpometacarpal joints by strong ligaments, the pisometacarpal and palmar and dorsal carpometacarpal ligament that makes a functional entity of these bones. Additionally, the joints between the bases of the metacarpal bones, the intermetacarpal articulations, are strengthened by dorsal, interosseous, and palmar intermetacarpal ligaments. Articulations the radiocarpal, intercarpal, midcarpal, carpometacarpal, and intermetacarpal joints often intercommunicate through a common synovial cavity. Function. Movement. The extrinsic hand muscles are located in the forearm where their bellies form the proximal fleshy roundness. When contracted, most of the tendons of these muscles are prevented from standing up like taut bowstrings around the wrist by passing under the flexor retinaculum on. 
the palmar side and the extensor retinaculum on the dorsal side. On the palmar side the carpal bones form the carpal tunnel through which some of the flexor tendons pass in tendon sheaths that enable them to slide back and forth through the narrow passageway. Starting from the mid-position of the hand, the movements permitted in the wrist proper are marginal movements, radial deviation and ulnar deviation. These movements take place about of dorsopalmar axis at the radiocarpal and midcarpal joints passing through the capitate bone. Radial abduction. Extensor carpa radialis longus. Abductor pollicis longus. Extensor pollicis longus. Flexor carpa radialis. Flexor pollicis longus ulnar abduction. Extensor carpa ulnaris. Flexor carpa ulnaris. Extensor digitorum. Extensor digiti minimi. Movements in the plane of the hand. Flexion and extension. These movements take place through a transverse axis passing through the capitate bone. Palmar flexion is the most powerful of these movements because the flexors, especially the finger flexors, are considerably stronger than the extensors. Extension. Extensor digitorum. Extensor carpa radialis longus. Extensor carpa radialis brevis. Extensor indices. Extensor pollicis longus. Extensor digiti minimi. Extensor carpa unris palma flexion. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor carpa unris. Flexor pollicis longus. Flexor carpa radialis. Abductor pollicis longus. Intermediate or combined movements. However, movements at the wrist cannot be properly described without including movements in the distal radiole and the joint in which the rotary actions of supination and pronation occur and this joint is therefore normally regarded as part of the wrist. Clinical significance. Wrist pain has a number of causes, including carpal tunnel syndrome and osteoarthritis. Tests such as Fallon's test involve palmar flexion at the wrist. The hand may be deviated at the wrist in some conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis. Ossification of the bones around the wrist is one indicator used in taking a bone age. The term wrist fracture may be used to refer to fractures of the distal radius. History Etymology The English word wrist is etymologically derived from the ancient German word wristes from which it derived modern German wrist in modern Swedish v wrist. The base wrist and its variants are associated with Old English words wreath, rest, and writhe. The wr sound of this space seems originally to have been symbolic of the action of twisting. Additional images Wrist joint Deep dissection Posterior view, wrist joint, deep dissection, posterior view, wrist joint, deep dissection, anterior, palmar, view, wrist joint, deep dissection, anterior, palmar, view.